Arjuna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances to Maharaj. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. We'll begin. Yes, we did. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanjena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shremati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sanyavadi Paschacha Desha Tarine Gantra Kaupa Terubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Vaivacha Patita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this evening we're continuing our study of Bhagavad Gita with chapter 14, the three modes of material nature. Can you see the slide? Yes. Okay. Okay. Today, I have to call on Rapu Kaur House to can discuss the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are going to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we are which is the link between chapter 13 and chapter 14. So the verse comes in the 13th chapter, text number 22. 
ดูสรุปที่มีความเชื่อมสัมพันธ์จากบทที่13นะคะที่มันทำให้ลิงก์กับบทที่14เนี่ยก็จะเป็นสรุปที่22 Yeah go ahead So in the 13th chapter Arjuna began by asking questions he had he wanted to know about different items and the first thing he wanted to know about was the prakriti and purusha so prakriti means material nature and purusha means the enjoyer so this this is discussed in this verse The living entity and material nature thus follows the way of ways of life, enjoying the three modes of nature. This is due to his association with that material nature. Thus, he meets with good and evil among various species. บอกว่าสิ่งมีชีวิตในธรรมชาติวัตถุปฏิบัติตามวิธีแห่งชีวิตเรื่นเริงกับสามระดับของธรรมชาติและเป็นเช่นนี้เนื่องจากมาคบหาสมาคมกับธรรมชาติวัตถุนั้นดังนั้นเขาจึงพบกับความดีและความชั่วในเผ่าพันธุ์ต่างๆ So the we we all suffer and enjoy according to how we associate with the three modes of material nature. So we're going to hear about the three modes of material nature tonight. Go ahead. So here's the first verse of the 14th chapter. Arjuna is asking a question again. Oh, oh no, sorry, Krishna is speaking, right? No, Krishna is speaking. No question, because continued from the 13th chapter. So Krishna is going to describe. He said, "Again, I shall declare to you this supreme wisdom, the best of all knowledge." Knowing which all the sages have attained the supreme perfection. So when Krishna says this is the best of all knowledge, he said this is the best of all knowledge in relation to material nature, in relation to the three modes. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So we we want you to understand. That in material life, the, if we want to do something, we have a goal, something we want to achieve. There's a process with what we have to go through in order to come to the goal. And just like we have shown here, the example, there's a concert, a, a big concert, a very famous person is giving a concert, and so the man thinks he'd like to go, but in order to go, he has to know how to get, where to get the tickets. He has to be able to get them. So, yeah, na thi ni thi hai wai na ha, ko kuu pu chai. Kon ni na khao ni kip thi ta yak thi ta pai concert. So in everything, the way you have some goal we want to achieve, there's a process to achieve it. So 
So this also applies to our, uh, to our activities in devotional service. Go ahead. Yeah. The goal, you can see here, our, our goal is to, to achieve devotional service. If we want to get, come to devotional service, we have to be able to get over all the obstacles and the hurdles, the things which are obstructing us and making it difficult for us. Just like sometimes people are attached to things like smoking cigarettes. That's a that's an obstacle. They have to be able. They have to give up the smoking of cigarettes in order to take up devotional service. Yeah, we have some bad habits or we have some attachment to, maybe we're attached to someone who's not a devotee and they're not interested in devotional service, then it's a big problem in trying to become a devotee. Go ahead. Okay, this is text number three. Lord Krishna is speaking. The total material substance called Brahman is the source of birth. And it is that Brahman that I impregnate, making possible the births of all living beings, O son of Bharata. So the question is, how do the jivas, how do the living entities, how did we come in contact with the material nature? Thank you. Sometimes people think, that we all just come from chemicals. Go back. Go back. What's going on? What are you doing? I missed the flight. Um, here. We're at text um, number four. Go. This uh, this oh. one. Go on. Go back. Yes, this sir. one. Text three. We're on text number three. Okay. Okay. Don't keep moving. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So, so people think, where do we all come from? Are we just coming from chemicals? Can we create people just from chemicals? No, of course, we don't come from chemicals. You, the feelings which you have for each other, that you love for your family, is it just love for like a bag of chemicals? No, there's something more important than just chemicals in, in that is the soul. The, the living entity is a spiritual particle and we have relationships with the spiritual particle. But, so, 
Some people think that life comes from chemicals. And they may give the example that just like scorpions come from rice. But everyone knows this rice does not produce scorpions, but a scorpion lays eggs in the rice. And when the eggs hatch, then the baby scorpions come out from the eggs. So the scorpions are laid there by an, another scorpion. The, the scorpions who create scorpions. Go ahead, next slide. All right, now text number four. It should be understood that all species of life for son of Kunti are made possible by birth in this material nature and that I am the seed giving father. So this is stated here in the verse, Pita means the father and Bija means the seed. So Krishna says, Aham, I am the seed-giving father. Krishna is like the father of all living entities. So Lord Krishna is overseeing everything which is going on in this material world. And Krishna is the father, not just only of the human species, all the different species of life, all living entities, they all have souls. So we respect all different forms of life and we think of all the different forms of life just like brothers and sisters. And not only animals, even plants and trees, we think of them also as our brothers and sisters. Because we see the soul in all the different species of life. So we are the children and Krishna is the father. So you can see Krishna in the, in the picture here, in the slide, Krishna is overseeing everything. <laughs> and he's arranging for everyone, taking care of everyone, just like father takes care of the family. Go ahead. Okay, so the material nature, we want to understand what is this material nature. The material nature is of three different kinds, goodness, passion and ignorance. So you can see in the picture there are three colors. There's yellow, 
and red and blue, just like the three modes. Yellow is like goodness, red is passion, and the blue is ignorance. <laughs> And just like colors, when you mix them together, just like if you mix blue and yellow together, you get green. And when you mix blue and red together, then you get purple. And when you mix red and yellow together, then you get what color? You get orange. Yeah, orange. So in this way, different people are a mixture, a combination of these three different modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. And you can see the nature of the different activities. Somebody who is in goodness, just like you can see the monk, he's sitting peacefully and he's meditating, his mind is peaceful, he's not materialistic, he has no desire. So this is the mode of goodness. And then in the middle picture, you see someone in the mode of passion. They're working all the time, he's working all the, he's always over the computer all the time, doing so many different things, trying to make money and so many plans. And then you see on the right here, someone in the mode of ignorance. They will eat some disgusting kind of food, animal flesh and things, and they will eat a lot of it, and they will be, they will always be, they're kind of dirty and untidy. <laughs> They'll be lazy, they're dirty, they don't keep clean. That's a mode of ignorance. So people associate with these different qualities and they, be, they, they become conditioned. They, they, they think this is normal. They think this is their, their way of living. Go ahead. So, you can see the material nature, the three modes, goodness, passion and ignorance, is all just like different kinds of handcuffs. One handcuff may be gold, other handcuff is silver and other handcuff is iron. But still, you're not free, you're a prisoner. If you put handcuffs on someone, then they're a prisoner. So the same way, the modes of nature are like this. Someone may be in the mode of goodness, but it doesn't mean they're free. They're still a prisoner. 
if, if, you're in, if someone puts golden handcuffs on you, you're still a prisoner. So we want to understand how this, how the modes of nature, how they condition us and they put, a, they keep us a prisoner to act, force us to act in different ways against our spiritual nature. Okay, text number six describes the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness being purer than the others is illuminating and it frees one from all sinful reactions. Those situated in that mode become conditioned by a sense of happiness and knowledge. So we give some examples of people in the mode of goodness. The first one is the Brahmana. Brahmana is supposed to be a symbol of the mode of goodness. And then some other people, they might be in the mode of goodness, maybe a scientist, philosopher, a poet, they could be in the mode of goodness. So, so the mode of goodness, it, it frees one, so it's purifying, it frees us from sinful reactions. And, but the problem is we get attached to the happiness and the knowledge. So in the mode of goodness, people are thinking, I know, I'm, I know more than other people. So they, they become happy thinking they know more than other people. So they have that sense of superiority over others. So this is the problem with the mode of goodness, that we become attached, people become happy there, and they're just, they don't think to go any higher. But they don't know there's something beyond the mode of happiness, the mode of goodness. Okay, this is describing the example of the mode of goodness. And so, okay, it, as we said, it purifies us and we have a, we, we get some knowledge and maybe, maybe we want more knowledge, that's good. It's an advantage if somebody is in the mode of goodness, it's an advantage for them to take up spiritual life. The advantage is that we're nearer to transcendence. 
than the people in passion and ignorance. The people in passion and ignorance, they are very low. They have a long way to come up, to come to transcendence. But if one is in goodness, it's not so far to transcend. It's just a little change. So here they're saying if you go to the airport it's good for you to travel. Who's playing with your computer? It, it's just gone like that. Okay, go to the next slide. Okay, text number seven. The mode of passion. The mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings, O son of Kunti. And because of this, the embodied living entity is bound to material fruitive actions. So the mode of passion is very prominent in the world. Most of the people today live in the mode of passion. And people think passion is fun, they think it's enjoying. They don't know that the mode of passion always ends in distress. Okay, go ahead. Here you can see people in the mode of passion, right? Modern civilization is considered to be advanced in the standard of the mode of passion. So the mode of passion, you can see first of all, the you, people people want to be uh, married, they get a, a wife or a husband, and then they want children, and they need a home, and they need a car, and they need money, and so a lot of desires. <laughs> And to satisfy all these desires, of course, there's a lot of pressure on the man. He has to work, he has to go and find money, make money, bring money to pay for everything for the family. Uh, so this is how most people live. They live in the mode of passion. But the problem with the mode of passion is it easily degrades to the mode of ignorance. What, what you want to do is, you may be in the mode of passion, we want to come up to the mode of goodness. That's more difficult. To, to come up to the mode of goodness, we have to control the mind and senses.
But people in the mode of passion often they just want they want more and they, they and they have many bad habits and they will spend all their money on sinful activities, drinking all kinds of alcohol and eating all kinds of terrible food. Yeah, people are not trained how to control the mind and senses. They get a te when they get money, they'll buy a television and they'll sit and watch so many passionate and ignorant programs on television. And if we ask them to chant Hare Krishna, they say, oh no, I can't do that. No, I'm not going to, I can't, this, I can't, do, I'm not going to do that. And if we ask if we ask them to read the Bhagavad Gita, they will say, Oh, such a big book. Oh no, I can't read a big book like that. So we have to try to train people gradually, we have to get them to understand that the mode of passion is meant to elevate one to the mode of goodness and they, they should be careful not to degrade, not to fall down into the mode of ignorance. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. O son of Bharat, know that the mode of darkness born of ignorance is a delusion of all embodied living entities. The result of this mode are madness, indolence and sleep which bind the conditioned soul. So the mode of ignorance is the exact exact opposite of the mode of goodness. People in the mode of goodness will be very clean, but people in the mode of ignorance are very unclean. And people in the mode of goodness, they will regulate their sleeping to six or seven hours a day. But people in the mode of ignorance, they will sleep 10, 12 hours every day. So, the mode of ignorance is something very dangerous. We want to really avoid it. Go ahead. Okay. The predominant guna in Kali Yuga, passion and ignorance. So these two modes, passion and ignorance, are very common. And there's very less goodness and there's a lot of passion and ignorance. And you can see 
why people are so much in the mood of passion and ignorance. When it comes to travel, they like to travel for their sense gratification. And they'll go to places where they can sit and gratify their senses, eating and drinking, all horrible things. ส่วนแรงอะที่เขาจะอยากทำก็คือการไปการเที่ยวไปเที่ยวสถานที่ต่างๆและสถานที่ที่เขาจะเลือกที่จะไปก็คือที่ที่เขาไปแล้วเขาจะสามารถทํากิจกรรมสนองประสาทสัมผัสเพื่อให้ประสาทสัมผัสของเขาเนี่ยปลุกปลอดใจอย่างเช่นไปกินที่ดีๆไปที่สวยๆ And people are very eager to get money, and they'll do anything to make money, and they'll do all kinds of illegal marketing, illegal businesses, lying and cheating people just to make money. We know in Thailand there's so many copies. They're not the genuine product. There's a copy, but they'll sell it at a very high price. And people think it's a genuine thing, but it's a copy. And then people like cars. That's again, that's very much associated with the mode of passion and ignorance. They want cars which they can go very fast, and they like to drive their cars in a very dangerous way. So the mode of passion and ignorance is just all based around the body and the different demands of the body, material desires. So the problem is if we if we stay in the mode of passion and ignorance, then next birth we will take birth again in the mode of passion and ignorance. ปัญหาก็คือถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยอยู่แต่ในระดับปัญหาแล้วก็วิชาอย่างนี้ต่อไปเรื่อยๆจนเราหมดชีวิตเนี่ยชาติหน้าเราเกิดมาเราก็จะเป็นเราก็จะอยู่ในระดับปัญหาและวิชานี้อีก We should always remember the activities we do in this life will determine the body we get in the next life เราจะต้องจำไว้เสมอว่ากิจกรรมที่เราทําในชาตินี้มันจะส่งผลให้เราเนี่ยได้รับร่างต่อไปในชาติหน้า So if we live like a dog, next life will become a dog. If we live like a pig, next life will become a pig. And so we should be very careful, very conscious. Everything we do. So Krishna, Lord Krishna is explaining about these three different modes of nature, so that we can recognize where are we, what mode of nature are we in, are we in passion and ignorance? If we are, we should try to get out of it. We should change our life. Krishna is giving this knowledge to us to try to help us to improve our life. Krishna is giving this knowledge to us to try to help us to improve our life. Krishna is giving this knowledge to us to try to help us to improve our life. Krishna is giving this knowledge to us to try to help us to improve our life. Krishna is giving this knowledge to us to And it describes how there's competition between the modes. That sometimes you may be in goodness, but then you may be influenced by passion, and then you can be influenced by ignorance. You can't, it doesn't mean that you'll always stay in the mode of goodness. 
นี้บอกว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยระดับความดีเนี่ยอาจจะโดดเด่นบางครั้งเราอาจจะอยู่ในระดับความดีบางครั้งเราอาจจะอยู่ในระดับอวิชชาโดดเด่นบางทีตั้งขาโดดเด่นเพราะเราจะไม่เราจะไม่อยู่ในระดับเดียวไปตลอด And we see in the course of one day, different times of the day will influence us in different ways. Just look at the top line of pictures. On the top left, you have the sunrise. So someone will be sitting, meditating. They can meditate on the sunrise. And maybe they're chanting Japa, Hare Krishna, and watching the sunrise. That's the mode of goodness. And then the middle picture, they go to work. Their office is in the city, and they have to go into the office in the city. There's some more passion. And then they come home at night, and they're tired, and they can go to sleep, and they have a nice bed. They lay down and go to sleep. This is it's like the mode of ignorance. And then the bottom line of pictures, you see the little boy there, little child just growing up. He doesn't know anything. He's, you know, he's, he hasn't got any education or anything, so he's really in the mode of ignorance at that point in his life. Little children. But when he grows up, then he'll get a job. He'll go in the office, have a job. He'll be more in the mode of passion. And then you see the picture on the bottom right. You see the ladies there, the older ladies with grey hair. You see they're in the mode of goodness. They've already finished their lives. You know they're not thinking. They're not thinking about having more children. They're not thinking about getting rich or anything. They're they're peaceful. They're satisfied. They're just preparing themselves for the next life. And we sometimes say people who live in the in the countryside they live in the mode of goodness. The people who live in the city live in the mode of passion. And if you live in the bar or in the casino, that's a mode of ignorance. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Text number 18. Those situated in the mode of goodness gradually go upwards to the higher planets. Those in the mode of passion live on the earthly planets and those in the mode of ignorance go down to the hellish worlds. So 
you live in the mode of goodness, then if you if you die in the mode of goodness, you know, if you die in the nice, say you go to the holy place to die, to leave the body, then it's very nice, you know, there's a good chance you'll go to the higher planets next life. But if we die in the mode of passion, maybe we're working in the office and we have a heart attack suddenly, so next life we come back in the earthly planet. And for people in the mode of ignorance, they go down to the hellish planets. Or they will take the animal body, they will enter into the lower species like animal or tree. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. and so here's the summary of the different modes of nature, what happens, what qualities people have in the different modes, goodness, passion and ignorance. Right? Look at the result. The result of the mode of goodness, people become pious. The result of the mode of passion, misery. And the result of ignorance, foolishness. Uh, ผลกระทบนะที่เรียกว่าผลผลที่เขาจะได้เนี่ยมันเป็นยังไงก็คือถ้าเกิดใครอยู่ในระดับความดีเขาก็จะเป็นนักบุญอ่าใครก็จะได
ก็คือจะไม่เกลียดอะไรแล้วจะไม่ยึดติดกับอะไรแล้วก็จะไม่จะสามารถควบคุมจิตใจแล้วก็ประสาทสัมผัสของตนเองได้ And he sees happiness and distress the same. And he looks upon a lump of earth, a stone, and a piece of gold the same. And he's he's steady. He's steady in honor or dishonor. And he's equal to both friends and enemies. So this is how. This is what you have to be able to do in order to transcend the modes of nature. Go ahead. So here's the verse Lord Krishna is describing what we need to do to overcome the modes of nature. Krishna says, "One who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances, at once transcends the modes of material nature, and thus comes to the level of Brahman." Text number twenty-six. ในสโลกที่26นะคะบอกว่าผู้ปฏิบัติในการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้อย่างเต็มที่ไม่หยุดยั้งในทุกๆสถานการณ์ข้ามพ้นระดับต่างๆแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุและมาถึงระดับแห่งประมาณทันที So this is a very important verse often quoted by Prabhupada and by devotees because we all often people want to know how can I get free of the modes of nature อันนี้เป็นสโลกยอดนิยมนะคะแล้วก็เป็นสโลกที่ศิลปะพานแล้วก็สาวกหลายท่านเนี่ยจะใช้ในการบรรยายเพราะว่าส่วนใหญ่แล้วเนี่ยบุคคลจะอยากรู้ว่าจะจะอยู่เหนือสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุนี้เนี่ยได้อย่างไร The modes of nature are forcing me. They're getting me to do things. How can I overcome them? เพราะว่าส่วนใหญ่เนี่ยก็จะมีความยากอยู่กับการที่รู้สึกว่าตัวเองเนี่ยถูกสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุนี้ครอบนำแล้วก็ทำให้ตัวเองไม่สามารถพัฒนาได้สุด So Krishna said we have to do full devotional service. ตรงนี้นะ Krishna ทรงบอกไปเลยนะคะในท่อนแรกว่าต้องปฏิบัติการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้อย่างเต็มที่ And it's got we've got to be able to do it in all different situations at all times. แล้วก็เราต้องปฏิบัติในทุกๆสถานการณ์แล้วก็โดยไม่หยุดยั้ง And then that will bring us above the modes of nature. Above the modes of nature is to come to the level of Brahman. ตอนนั้นเราก็จะอยู่เหนือระดับเหนือสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุเราก็จะทำให้เราอยู่ในระดับ Brahman. Brahman is the transcendental platform. It's above the modes of nature. Goodness, passion, and ignorance are all in the material platform. But when you come to the platform of Brahman, then you're on the spiritual platform. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this is the story about one devotee of Lord Shiva, and uh, he wanted to get the greatest wealth. So he went to ask this one Goswami. And he asked the Goswami, "Can you give me the greatest wealth?" 
And he said, I, I, heard, I, I heard you have a stone which can make gold. Can you give me that stone? So the Goswami said, yeah, oh, you want that stone? He said, oh, it's over there in the garbage. Go ahead, take it. So the, the devotee of Shiva, he went over there and he got that stone and he saw it could make gold. He was very happy. But then he thought for a while and he thought that, you know, why is he giving it away? It's such a valuable thing. And he had it in the garbage and he gave it to me, gave it away. He said, he must have something more valuable. So he, he said to him, have you got something more valuable than this? I want the most valuable thing you have. So then the, the Goswami told him, if you want the most valuable thing, you have to throw that stone away. You have to throw that stone into the Yamuna. You see the picture of the Yamuna there? Throw it into the sea, into the water of the Yamuna. That's very deep. You'll never find it again. แล้วก็ถ้าพอท่านพอคนนี้เนี่ยได้ได้เห็นก่อนนั้นไปแล้วนะเค้าก็รู้สึกว่าเออทําไมของที่มีค่าขนาดนี้เนี่ยเค้
money and gold will just make us more greedy and lusty. It won't be good for us. But if we chant Hare Krishna and go to temple and see the deity, this will be very good for us and will help us to become a better person. Okay, go ahead. All right, any questions? Okay, now I'm going to open the door. Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj, from Sarapunima Mataji. Oh, Sarapunima Mataji, okay. Yes, sir. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Dandarapranam. I have written a question. Uh, Ajana will translate. Hare Guru. Ajana, Eja Tha, Makiri Guru Maharaj, Kutu, Wa, Yunela Dap Pandi, Jameha. Kon Bang Thi, Tauka Nehen, Kon Bang Kuti, Yunela Dap Pandi. เขาก็จะอย่างเช่นกลุ่มอย่างที่กลุ่มมาบอกไปเขาก็จะมั่นใจในตัวเองมากอย่างเช่นถ้าเขาจะคิดว่าเขาจะเขาอยู่ในระด
to read the Bhagavad Gita and to understand more about who they are and how they're struggling with the material nature. How sometimes they're in goodness, sometimes they're in passion, sometimes they're in ignorance. The only way they can get free of this material nature is by becoming devotee, by taking up bhakti yoga. So they have to start chanting, they, have to, they, they may not come to the association of devotees, but they have to start chanting the holy name. And it's easier to chant the holy name with devotees, they like, but if they like to do it on their own, it's okay, they can do it on their own. But they have to start chanting and they have to understand the process of bhakti yoga. We want to encourage them to take up bhakti yoga. เอ่อละรักนั้นหรือไอ้คนที่อยู่ในระดับไหนก็แล้วแต่ก็คือความรู้จักหนังสือพระพุทธกิตานั่นเองให้เขาเนี่ยมีความเข้าใจก่อนว
เหมือนกันกับบุคคลที่อยู่แบบต่างจังหวัดชอบวิธีแบบอยู่กับธรรมชาติอะไรแล้วก็บอกว่าตรงนั้นมันก็เป็นสิ่งดีมากเลยนะมันทําให้ผู้คนเนี่ยสามารถแบบคิดภาพถึงการมีอยู่ของพระเจ้าได้มากกว่าบุคคลที่ใช้ชีวิตในตัวจังหวัดเลย So gradually you make friends with people that they they like you. You have things with, in common with them, and you, they can be friendly with you. And this way, then you can you have a better chance to bring them to Krishna consciousness. So this is some ideas. Yes. Oh, is that okay, yes. Sarat Purnima? Was that okay, Thank you, Ramanas. Yes, please. Thank you for the question. All right. Let's hear from Shaya. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, dan nama pernah kita accept my humble obeisances. Oh, kau itu sila pabuban. Eh, kata kamu, kami nak kami ada kuam sung sai di setelok ti sa bot ti sibsi ni, ha. Eh, ti bok wa, mern kap. ปรมาตมาคริชนาเป็นต้นเหตุแห่งการเกิดแล้วก็เหมือนเป็นบิดาของมเมล็ดพันธุ์แต่ว่าพี่สงสัยว่าการที่เหมือนคริชนาทําให้บรามันตั้งครรภ์อะไรอย่างค่ะคือพี่ไม่เข้าใจในฟิลโลโซฟีนี้อยากให้มหารัฐอธิบายให้กระจ่างนิดนึงค่ะหรือยกตัวอย่างให้ง่ายกว่านี้นิดนึงค่ะค่ะโอเคขอบคุณค่ะอาจารย์อาจารย์คริชนาบุรุษมหาราชการ question is regarding the sloka number three from this chapter Where Krishna said that he made the Brahman pregnant, and he is the father of all uh, living entities. So in this case, how he made the Brahman pregnant? Can you explain more? Yes. Regarding just by his glance, could Krishna glances over the material nature? ก็คือจากการที่พระองค์เนี่ยทรงมองไปที่ธรรมชาติวัตถุนะคะการมองของเรา just by looking over just by that glance Krishna can do that he has that power จากการมองไปของพระองค์เนี่ยทำให้บรมันเนี่ยตั้งขันพระองค์ทรงมีพลังแบบพลังแบบ And he puts all the living entities into the material nature, and they come to life. Krishna doesn't have to do things the way we do them. You know, if you want to impregnate, if somebody wants to impregnate, if some man wants to impregnate a woman. It's a very different thing, but when Krishna wants to impregnate the material nature, he can do it just by his glance. เราจะเป็นสิ่งที่แตกต่างกันค่ะในโลกวัตถุนี้นะสมมติผู้ชายจะทําให้ผู้หญิงฟ้องเนี่ยมันก็จะมีวิธีการอีกแบบหนึ่งแต่การที่กระชากทำให้บรมันท้องเนี่ยก็เป็นวิธีการอีกแบบ Understand, Shaya? Uh, yes, but I don't understand a little bit. Can you explain about um, example about how how uh, I understand about how Brahman pregnant? <laughs> I don't understand about about uh, the living entity or something. Can you explain more? Well, I don't know. It's It's something you have to hear again and again, then you'll understand it. You see, it's it's not that I have to explain it more. You just have to hear this again and again. It's something very new for you, so it's difficult for you to understand and accept. But you just have to hear it. 
Guru Maharaj uh, is meaning about um, I know about Brahmatma is inside uh, our living entity heart and Brahman also in living entity also right eh? no no a living entity is part of the Brahman living entity is part of the Brahman Paramatma is also not material Paramatma is also spiritual Okay, living, enti living entity, we are all Brahman, we are all sparks of the Brahman, we are tiny parts. The Brahman is like the ocean and we are like the drops of water from the ocean. We have all the qualities of the Brahman. We are Satchit Ananda, our soul is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. The soul, just like Krishna. Krishna's body is also Satchit Ananda, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. So our so we also as souls, we are also eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. But we identify with the body. So when Krishna says, I impregnate the living entities into the material, I, I impregnate the material nature. He puts the living entities into the material nature and it will be according to their karma from the previous life. And the previous life may have been, maybe there was a night of Brahma. At the end of Brahma's day then there's a night. And when the night of Brahma comes then there's a destruction. So all the living entities, they all enter into, into Mahavishnu. And then when the day comes again, then they come out again. They come out again they can, and, they, and they come out with their karma, what they had before, from the before, and they continue from where they left off. So Krishna is like that. Krishna is the father. He said, I am the father, the seed-giving father. And Krishna puts the seed in the living, in, in the hearts of the bodies of the living entities. The seed is, that seed is, that's the Brahman, that's the, the, that's the living entity. The living entity is the Brahman. We are Brahman. That is, when we come into the 18th chapter, you will see Krishna describes Brahman realization. And coming to do devotional service means to come to the platform of Brahman. When we do devotional service, we don't do it on the material platform. Devotional service is spiritual. If it's, if it's pure, if our devotional service is pure, then it's spiritual. But if our devotional service is mixed with passion and ignorance, then it's not pure. Our devotional service has to be very pure. To get the, then it's on the spiritual platform. But we may do devotional service, we may do it in passion and we may do it in ignorance. You may chant Hare Krishna and you're falling asleep, that's a mode of ignorance. Or you're chanting Hare Krishna, you want to get some material desire, that's a mode of passion. And if we're chanting Hare Krishna just to get rid of some bad karma, that's the mode of goodness. It's still not transcendental. Transcendental is when we do it for Krishna, not for ourselves. We're doing it for Krishna, to, for Krishna's pleasure. Archana? Okay, ตั้งครรภ์ก็คือเราเนี่ยเป็นเอ่อเราก็อยู่เราเนี่ยเป็นบรรมาณอยู่แล้วใช่ป่ะแล้วก็จากการมองของกฤษณะเนี่ยทํา
แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเรายังปฏิบัติแบบว่าสวดมนต์แล้วง่วงนอนสวดมนต์แล้วหาสวดมนต์แล้วยังต้องการผลทางวัตถุอยู่หรืออะไรอย่างเงี้ยเนี่ยอันนี้เนี่ยไม่เรียกว่าเป็นการวิตตอนเสียสารับใช้ที่บริสุทธิ์แต่เป็นการวิตตอนเสียสารับใช้แบบเพื่อ,อผลทางวัตถุอยู่ก็ยังเป็นในระดับตัณหาหรือในระดับความดีแบบนี้อยู่นะคะแต่ถ้าเกิดเมื่อใดก็แล้วแต่ที่เราเริ่มสวดมนต์โดยให้เป็นการสวดมนต์ให้กุชนาโดยที่เราเนี่ยไม่มีความต้องการอะไรเลยสําหรับเราตอนนั้นเนี่ยจะเรียกว่าเป็นการวิตตอนเสียสารับใจที่บริสุทธิ์ที่เรามีต่อเขาโอเค Do you understand Shia ขอเข้าใจ Yes ลูกมาแล้วอาจารย์นะคะพี่มีคําถามเล็กๆค่ะเหมือนกับว่าอย่างเงี้ยถ้าเกิดว่าเราเราเป็นส่วนหนึ่งของบรามานแต่ว่าพอเรามาเกิดในในธรรมชาติวัตถุเนี่ยเราก็คืออยู่ในใต้ใต้ใต้ใต้ธรรมชาติวัตถุก่อนก่อนใช่ไหมแล้วเราถึงพอเราเราปฏิบัติดีโวชันอลโซวิสเราถึงเหมือนพัฒนากลับสู่บรามานที่เข้าใจถูกไหมโอเคถูกใช่ไหมเดี๋ยวขอถามหน่อยนะครับเอ่อ so guru maharaj her understanding is before we were in the level of brahman And after we come to this material world, we go under the three modes of material nature. And we, when we come to the spiritual platform again, we will come to the Brahman level. Is that correct? Yes, the Brahman, Brahman is the beginning. We have to, go, we can go on from Brahman. We go on to develop love for Krishna. The goal is not just come to Brahman. But the goal is to develop love for Krishna. Okay, เราก็คือมีเหมือนกับการเริ่มต้นก็คือมาจากประมาณนะคะแต่ว่าในการพัฒนาในชีวิตทิพย์ค่ะก็คือขั้นแรกที่เราเนี่ยอยู่เหนือธรรมชาติวัตถุแล้วคือจะมาอยู่ในระดับประมาณก่อนแต่มันก็จะมีขั้นบันไดที่สูงขึ้นไปกว่าระดับประมาณจนถึงเราได้รับความรักษาเนี่ยอันนั้นก็คือพัฒนาไปเรื่อยๆแต่ว่าการเริ่มต้นแห่งการพัฒนาในวิถีคือการมาอยู่ในระดับประมาณ So devotional service begins on the Brahman การวิตตอนเสียสารับใช้เนี่ยเริ่มตอนที่เราเนี่ยได้มาอยู่ในระดับประมาณ But we want to go higher to develop the relationship with Krishna แต่ว่าเราจะไปมากกว่านั้นอีกก็คือเราจะพัฒนาความสัมพันธ์กับพระเจ้าเนี่ยเพิ่มขึ้นไปเรื่อยๆ To know what is our relationship with Krishna, to develop that intimate connection with Krishna. เราต้องการพัฒนาความสัมพันธ์ที่เรามีกับพระเจ้าความสัมพันธ์ภายในโอเค thank you Guru Maharaj I understand Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Okay, Guruji. Ah, you now, Madhuri. Please go. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. O Guru Shishila Bhagupada. When we practice our sadhana, should we consider our nature? Because very often devotees say, for example, I cannot get up early in the morning because it is not my nature. Or I cannot read a lot of books because I have no this habit. Is it right? Thank you. Well, that is the conditioned state. Because the condition by the mode of ignorance, we don't like to do these things. Just like people eat meat. They like to take drugs. They like to do a lot of bad things. They could say, "Well, it's my nature. Yeah, it should. It's nature to be sinful." But if if you want to be Krishna conscious, if you want to change your life, and in, instead of becoming a pig in your next life, if you want to go on and elevate yourself out of the modes of nature, you have to take up Krishna consciousness. We have to change. Just like if you're in the body of a pig, then it's your nature to be a pig, to be dirty and to eat everything. And the pigs, they don't have any laws, they don't have any rules or regulations. 
But human life is very different. If you want to be a proper human being, you have to follow the rules. You have to follow the laws. You cannot say, oh, it's my nature. You can't, you know, if you do something wrong and the policeman comes and say, oh, you can't do this here, I'm going to arrest you. And you tell the policeman, oh, it's just my nature. The policeman will say, yeah, well, that nature doesn't belong out here. You have to go to prison, put you in the jail. Archana. ทำงานของมาดีนะคะถามว่าเวลาเราทําซาดานะหรือว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยสาวบางคนเนี่ยอาจจะทําบางกิจกรรมแม่ค่อยได้อย่างเช่นกิจ
ค่ะคือเราเป็นผู้ปฏิบัติที่มีความจริงใจในจริงจังในการปฏิบัติใช่ไหมจากการที่เขาสวดมนต์ไปเรื่อยๆเนี่ยมันก็จะทําให้เขาเนี่ยดีขึ้นอย่างแน่นอนแล้วก็เราก็จะทําให้เขาเนี่ยปฏิบัติในสิ่งที่เขาเนี่ยปฏิบัติไม่ได้ Some people are very fond of intoxication, or they're fond of a lot of sex. Okay, then you don't get initiated. You're not, you're not you're not able to get initiated if you're fond of doing these things, because in people who take initiation, they can't do these things. <laughs> เสพสินเสพติดอะไรถ้าเกิดว่าเขาจะไม่สามารถยกเลิกนิสัยที่ไม่ดีแบบนั้นได้เนี่ยเขาก็ไม่มีคุณสมบัติในการที่จะเข้ารับการอุปสมบทโอเคจัดเอาไรโอเคโอเคสวัสดีนะพระบุตร The Thai Prabhu. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Kung sa Rodi Chhele ka? Haribis na Guru Maharaj ka. Ah, kung mula ka ba sa ano ba? Ah, yah, kaya na, na lang patibat. Kung 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 มันเป็นสิ่งที่อะไรนะคะสามารถจะทำได้นะคะใช่ครับแล้วคำถามคืออะไรนะคะคำถามก็คือว่าการที่ผมตัวคาริกิจนะเนี่ยเราประกอบกับอุทิศศิลปะและรับใช้ด้วยครับก็อย่างอย่างเช่นถ้าผมรับใช้แบบว่าคุยกับคนอื่นยี่สิบสี่ชั่วโมงเกี่ยวกับกฤษณะเหรอคะเอ่อใช่ครับผมผมผมมาถึงเอ่อตรวจตรวจภาวนาอะไรเงี้ยครับตรวจตรวจมนยี่ยี่สี่ยี่สิบสี่ชั่วโมงครับมีความเป็นไปได้เหรอคะอพอดีงงถ้าเกิดว่าทําทําแบบที่ทําอยู่ปัจจุบันนี้จะทําให้มีความเป็นไปได้ในการสวดมนต์ยี่สิบสี่ชั่วโมงแบบนี้นะคะอ่าใช่ครับอโอเคกุลมาส์ his question is by the practice that he's been doing now like uh, chanting his round and Try to eat for Sadam something like that. The little devotional service that he being doing now, will that help him to one day be able to chant like 24 hours a day, even by living in this, uh, in this world like going to work, yeah, this and that. Well, we don't. Request devotees to chant 24 hours a day. The spiritual teachers they instruct us that we should try to chant 16 rounds a day. And 16 rounds a day that should take you about two hours or maybe three hours, depending on how you chant. But you you don't want to be you don't need to chant all day, but you do need to do a minimum amount of chanting. And if you can chant more, that's very nice. <laughs> เป็นประจำสิบหกรอบซึ่งมันน่าจะใช้เวลาประมาณสองชั่วโมงนะแต่ว่าถ้าเกิดว่ามีเวลาเนี่ยสวดมากกว่านั้นก็ได้ส
Some people would chant all day, but you know, that's very special souls. For ordinary people, you know, there's a regulated amount of chanting, and that is that we should do 16 rounds a day, and we should also try to read the books, read the Bhagavad Gita a little bit, and hear the philosophy, these things. So there's other activities, it's not only chanting, but somebody is a very pure soul, very great soul, maybe they can do a lot of chanting, they can chant all day. Maybe in, when you're retired, you know, in your old age, you can sit down and you can just sit and chant all day. Very nice. <laughs> ส่วนใหญ่แล้วเนี่ยก็จะไม่ได้ไม่ได้หมายไว้ว่าโอเคให้นั่งสวดมนต์ทั้งวันอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแล้วก็อาจจะมันเป